It is wonderful to be here with all of you on this joyous occasion as we recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of these men and women who have completed their academic programs at Penn State. You know, it may be raining out there, but today is a bright and sunshiny day in here as we conduct the inaugural commencement exercises for the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications. <laughs> to begin, it is now my pleasure to introduce today's commencement speaker, award-winning ESPN, ESPN reporter, Lisa Salters. Ms. Salters handles high-profile assignments for ESPN including her role as a sideline reporter for Monday Night Football and for NBA games on ABC and ESPN. She also contributes to a variety of ESPN studio shows and serves as a featured correspondent on the network's award-winning news magazine, E60. Ms. Salters, who was, an, who was named an alumni fellow by the university in 2007, joined ESPN as a general assignment reporter in March 2000. She has covered the NBA since 2005 and was a sideline reporter for ABC's Saturday Night Football college games for five seasons. She joined Monday Night Football in 2012, an E60 correspondent since the series launched in 2007. Ms. Salters earned a Gracie Award from the Association for Women in Radio and Television for Best Feature in 2009 and a Sports Emmy nomination in 2008. She also traveled to Haiti for a powerful story on the U-17 national women's soccer team just months after the country was devastated by an earthquake in 2010. Ms. Salter's journalistic assignments for the past three decades have brought her to major global events around the world. She reported from the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, Greece, and hosted ESPN's coverage of the 2006 Winter Olympics in Torino, Italy. In addition, Ms. Salters covers, covers sports-related stories in and around U.S. Central Command Cutter for Outside the Lines, Sports Center, and ESPN News during the buildup to the Iraq War. She returned to the war zone in 2004 when ESPN brought Sports Center to Camp Arifjan, a U.S. Army base in Kuwait. Before arriving at ESPN, Ms. Salters worked for ABC News from 1995 to 2000. She covered the O.J. Simpson civil and criminal trials, the Oklahoma City bombing trials, the 1998 Winter Olympics in Nagano, Japan, and the crash of TWA Flight 800, among other major stories. Earlier in her career, Ms. Salter served as a general assignment reporter for WBAL-TV in Baltimore where she covered national and international news, including the conflicts in the African countries of Rwanda and Somalia. Ms. Salters returned to Rwanda in the spring of 2012 with an initiative called The Girl Effect to teach young girls about journalism. A native of King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, Ms. Salters graduated from Penn State in 1988 with a bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism. She played guard for the women's basketball team from 1986 to 1987. She has been a consistent supporter of the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications, serving as a mentor for students and regularly participating in student-focused programming during her visits to campus. She has also provided scholarship support for students. We are truly honored to have Lisa Salters with us today. Lisa. Good afternoon, Dean Harden, graduates, faculty, family, and friends. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you today, and I know that you've all heard that line before, but what I need you to understand is how much I really mean it. I am profoundly grateful 
for the opportunity to be today's commencement speaker at the Donald P. Belisario School of Communications, and I truly consider it a privilege. And since I accepted the invitation months ago, I have been deeply humbled by the idea and now the reality of standing before you today because just like you, almost 30 years ago, I was just a kid. I was very excited. I was very scared. Uh, I was ready to prove that I could be a good journalist. I was ready to show that Penn State had trained me well. I was ready to show that I could rise above, that I could stand out, that I could represent my family, my friends, my university with pride and with excellence. And whether I have in fact done that or not, because as you all know, that is truly subjective. But the fact that you have asked me here today to speak, that tells me that at least you think that I have done at least some things right. And to me, that is incredibly humbling. And it's why I'm so grateful and truly honored to be here. So again, thank you very much. Don't worry, graduates, uh, I, I will be brief because I, I know that most people don't even remember who their commencement speaker was, let alone what he or she had to say. And I know that I have the added challenge of speaking to you on the day after Cinco de Mayo. Uh, but, but like the athletes that I cover, I am, if nothing else, competitive. And so I have challenged myself in the few minutes that I have to try to leave you with at least something, one thing that you can go out into the world with to try to help you out after, after you graduate. And I will definitely try to do so before anyone really gets antsy, starts squirming in their seats, and hopefully definitely before the beach balls start flying. So let's hold off on that until I'm done. Now, when I was trying to decide what message I wanted to bring to you today, I wanted it to be something that you could really hear, that you could relate to. Uh, and I didn't want it to be cliche. I didn't want it to, you know, the world is your oyster, dream big. I mean, those things are true. Uh, you really do have the world in front of you, and you can do whatever you want to do. And you really can achieve all of your dreams with some hard work and commitment. But I decided to put myself back in your seats and to remember how I was feeling when I was 22 years old and sitting where you're sitting and what would I have needed to hear? And what I kept coming back to is something that I would have loved to have heard then, but something that I still remind myself today, and that is to have courage. A couple of weeks before my graduation, unlike most of my business major friends, I didn't have a job lined up. How many of you out there have a job already? You know where you're going after college. Excellent, excellent. How many of you do not have a job yet? Raise your hand. <laughs> That's, that's perfectly normal. I mean, we, our industry is different than everybody else's. Jobs in television, at newspapers, magazines, and film, at ad agencies, they're hard to come by, and they usually go to people with experience. And, uh, you know, other than an internship here or there, most of you don't have a whole lot of experience. I was exactly the same way, sitting where you are, and I was scared to death. Scared that maybe I would never get a job, maybe I wouldn't get a job in my field, maybe the education that I had received would be wasted. And then a job offer came along. It, just a couple weeks before graduation, it wasn't exactly the job that I necessarily wanted. It definitely was not the job that I thought that I would have coming out of college. It was driving the Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile. Do they even still interview for that here? Okay, so back then I was told that this is a highly coveted job. I interviewed for it because I had nothing else going on. I interviewed for it, I went to Madison, Wisconsin, and I got the job, and I was gonna take that job, and I was gonna make that job work for me. Despite my mother, who was horrified, thinking, what am I gonna tell my friends, that you graduated from Penn State and now you're driving a truck shaped like a hot dog? I mean, she had a point, but like I said, I was gonna take that job and I was gonna make it work. But then at the last minute, I got a job offer from WBAL TV in Baltimore. And the position was a production assistant, which was really just a glorified gopher. Uh, it meant that I ripped scripts, uh, I listened to police scanners, I ran tape up and down the stairs to the control room, jobs that are pretty much obsolete now. But back then, back in 1988, do you wanna know what my starting salary was? $13,800 a year. And I was scared all over again. Even though I had a job now, I was scared. I was scared 
because I thought I can't make a living doing this, not on that salary. It was a lot of fun. I was passionate about it. I enjoyed it, but I was afraid because I knew I wasn't making the kind of money that my business make, make, uh, major friends were making uh, at Gillette, Johnson & Johnson, IBM. But guys, you're comm majors. That's not how we do it. Uh, you just have to overcome your fear right now. I know you're afraid that it's not going to work out, that the opportunities aren't going to be there, but they are. You just got to hang in there. You got to get over yourself and tell yourself, instead of being afraid, you're going to choose to be inspired. In 2012, after five seasons of covering college football, I was asked to take on a new role as the sideline reporter for Monday Night Football. It was the same job. Um, just on a much bigger stage, and I was terrified. I didn't know any of the NFL coaches. I knew very few of the NFL players, just some of the players who I had met in college who had gone on to the pros. Uh, so I was scared. Uh, in order to try to get the lay of the land a little bit, I decided to go visit a few training camps before that season started. So in July and August, uh, I went around the country and I visited uh, a few NFL training camps. And the first camp that I went to was for the Denver Broncos. And just to introduce myself to players and coaches, again, just to get the lay of the land. And, one of, and uh, while I was there at the Broncos training camp in Colorado, I started talking to a player in the team cafeteria. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I started talking to him about how scared I was, nervous I was, uh, about starting this new job, despite the fact that I had done well before uh, at ESPN. And his advice uh, was the same advice that he said that he was giving to himself because he was also uh, new to the team. He had had success elsewhere, but he was new to the Denver Broncos. And he said, Lisa, you've got to trust in your training. You've got to trust that the hard work that you put in is going to pay off. And instead of being overwhelmed by fear, have courage. Have courage to be great. That player was Peyton Manning. He was coming off of multiple neck surgeries. He, was, he hadn't played football in more than a year. Uh, he'd been released by the Indianapolis Colts, a team he'd played for for 13 seasons. He could have retired. Some people thought he should have retired. That certainly would have been the easy thing for him to do, something with the least unknowns. And he still, even if he had retired then, he would have been known as one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play. Uh, but he chose to have courage. He chose to do what he believed that he could still do. He inspired himself to keep on going. He inspired himself to be great. And for me, in August, I will start my sixth season with Monday Night Football. Several years ago, <laughs> thank you. Several years ago, I decided that I wanted to be a parent and I decided that I was going to adopt a child. I spent months and months preparing, filling out forms, meeting with social workers, taking required classes, basically getting vetted by all the various government agencies that you need to be vetted by to prove uh, that you're not a whack job and that you are fit to be a parent. And like I said, I went through this process for almost a year. It was all that I talked about. It was all I thought about. And then in February of 2013, uh, my cell phone rang. And the woman on the other end of the line was from the adoption agency, and she said, there's a birth mother. She's chosen you. The baby's coming in five weeks. Do you want this child? And despite the fact, like I told you, that this is all I had thought about for months and months, my first reaction, it was fear. I thought, I can't do this. I can't do this by myself. What was I thinking? I'm not going to be a good parent. Uh, I, I travel all the time. My job has too many, makes too many demands on me. I've got to say no. I can't do this. But then, after talking to my family and friends, I chose not to make fear the reason that I made such an important decision. I chose instead to try to be great. I don't know how great of a mom that I am, but my son Sam turned four last month. He's the light of my life. And every day he tells me that when he gets big, mommy, I'm going to go play for the Orioles. We live in Baltimore, so that's okay. <laughs> and finally, just last year around this time, I was headed to an NBA playoff game, and my boss at the news magazine show that I work for, he called, E60 is the name of the show, uh, he called and asked if I wanted to do a unique story about a transgendered teenage athlete in New Jersey. 
Now, he told me that this story was going to cover the teenager's transition from male to female, and it was going to be a story like none other that we had ever done at ESPN. And my first response, my first response when he said, would you like to be the reporter on this story, I said, mm, no thanks. Why? Because I was afraid of the whole idea of being transgender. I, I didn't really understand it. I didn't want to talk about it. I certainly didn't want to meet anybody who was trans transgendered because I was just afraid of the whole idea. And then I got off the phone and I thought about it and I was ashamed. And I thought to myself, you're a journalist. Your job is to tell stories. Your job isn't to judge stories. You're supposed to give a voice to people who don't have a voice. You don't have a right to deny someone the opportunity to tell their story. So I called my boss back and I said, hey, sign me up. I don't know what I was thinking. Sign me up, I'll do it. I was still uneasy about how the whole thing might go. But when I met Matt Dawkins and his family last summer, I was so inspired by what that kid had to say and so inspired by the courage that he showed in saying it. That story ran last fall and has been nominated for several national awards. And one of, one of the awards is a sports Emmy, and that ceremony is on Tuesday. And I got to tell you, I sure hope we win it. Uh, not just for me, although I'm not going to lie, I'd like to win an Emmy, uh, but more so for Matt and his family, because Matt is choosing to live his life not in fear, but as an inspiration to others. And he has certainly inspired me. So as you sit out there today, the same place where I was, almost 30 years ago, have courage. When it comes time to decide between what's good enough and what's great, have courage. When it's time to choose between doing what's comfortable and doing what's right, have courage. And if you ever need a hand, think of your family here at Penn State. We are. Yeah, we are. We're a family of blue and white. And I get to see that, I get to feel that all the time. Like this week when I emailed Devin Still, and he told me that his daughter Leah has been cancer free for two years. That was a great feeling. Yeah. <clears throat> or when I get to do an interview with Sean Lee and Navarro Bowman at the same time on the sidelines at the Pro Bowl. That's pretty awesome. That bond, that mutual respect, that's always going to be there. And, and now as you prepare to go out into the world, you're about to see for yourself what that bond really means. Several years ago, I was covering a game here and I was walking along the sidelines and people tend to yell at me when I'm working. And to be honest, most of the time, uh, it can be distracting because again, <laughs> I'm trying to work. Um, but it was halftime of the game and I was walking along the sideline towards the locker room here at Penn State. And this booming voice just came out of the stands, hey Lisa! And I turned to look, again, feeling somewhat annoyed. And when I spotted the person in the stands who had yelled so loudly, the stadium just seemed to go absolutely quiet. And this woman, she just looked down at me. And this time, she didn't even have to yell. She simply said, welcome home. Penn State will always be our home. Thank you so much for allowing me to celebrate with you today. Remember to have courage. Be great. Go get them and make us Penn State proud. Thank you.